Episode 6 of Percy Jackson is here, and I'm ready for it with my Disney hat and everything. As I've been doing, I'm going to go through the episode, break it down, point out hidden details and easter eggs, and of course give my thoughts on the episode. Then at the end, I'll rate it out of 10 and see how it compares to the other episodes that we've gotten so far. Now, there will be spoilers for episodes 1 to 6, so you have been warned. Also, if you enjoy this video, hit that like button. It will greatly help the channel with the algorithm, and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, and you can also follow me on all of my other social medias, all of which are linked down below, and all of which house similar content that I make here on this channel. Now that I've said that, let's get the video started. The episode is called, We Take a Zebra to Vegas, which is taken from the title of the 16th chapter of the first book. We start off with a dream sequence, as we're taken back to the room where Percy got disciplined at Yancey Academy in the first episode. They made the principal be the looming threat who has been in past dreams, whereas earlier he looked more like the Grim Reaper. We also see the shadow of who he's talking to, which is of course, as he said, the Lightning Thief. Following Percy waking up, we see them do an iris message, and they do it exactly how they did it in the book, complete with a rainbow, a payment, and praying to the goddess Iris. Oh, Iris, goddess of the rainbow, please accept my offering. Just like in the book, Luke answers. But one thing interesting is that in the book, this actually happened before their meeting with Ares, not after like the show has it. During this call, we get the answer to that cliffhanger at the end of the last episode where Grover said he knew who the lightning thief was. Just as many predicted, including myself, he said Clarice. Clarice is the lightning thief. We also get another Percy and Annabeth moment that was not in the book as they talk about their mission. Medusa was Saturday. I thought Sunday. No monsters on Sunday. Monday you died in the river. Right, so Medusa on Saturday. Then Luke asks what this is between Percy and Annabeth. Guys, what is this? What? Why did you turn into an old married couple? I personally like this a lot, and I love that they're hinting at their relationship by dropping little things here and there that weren't in the book, much like the Harry Potter films did with Ron and Hermione. We get a mention of Luke and his father Hermes relationship, which in the book is very complicated. They don't get along? At all. Later in the episode, they also mention a plotline from the final book of the original five, which is Luke's backstory with his mother. Like meeting his mom. She's a seer. A human who can see through the mist. Sometimes I see stuff that messes them up. What Luke's mother saw made her go crazy, making Luke's childhood very hard on him. And as Annabeth said, Luke blamed his father for this. And Luke blames Hermes for it, and I think Hermes would do anything to win him back. The show takes us even farther, as Hermes mentions that Annabeth was there the night of their argument. I remember you. You were there. Last time I saw Luke. Yes. I saw you argue. And this refers to the flashback that we saw in The Last Olympian. To be honest, I don't like that they told us this this early on. I think we should have gotten to know more of Luke before he was brought up. Especially because this wasn't even brought up until book 5, and we're on book 1. I wish they had instead talked about Luke and Hermes' tough relationship because of his failed quest, which is what the first book highlighted when talking about their bad relationship. How this goes is that Hermes gave Luke a quest to steal a golden apple from the Garden of Hesperides. Luke was mad at his father because Hercules had already done this quest, and it went terribly as he got a scar while battling a dragon, and he failed to complete it successfully. This would have been more than enough to explain why Luke hates his father, but there was zero mention of it, which is pretty shocking because this is a huge part of his character arc. They substituted that for something that I think they jumped the gun on. But getting back to the episode, Grover mentions that the animals have a plan. They've already got a plan to get themselves out. This is a way of showing that Grover can communicate with animals, which he was able to do in the novel as well. I like this because it's a lot more show and a lot less tell, which I think is one of the show's weaknesses so far. They explain things too much rather than just showing it to us. We get a view of Las Vegas where all of the animals are set loose from the Kindness International truck, which makes a very hilarious shot. You can see people taking pictures with their phone, a kid feeding the camel out of the window of the car, and it's a very well put together sequence. And it gets even better when you look at the background. You have the MGM Grand Casino, and it looks like you have Medusa's eyes up on the big screen. 
Plus, you have an ad to live in the Juniper, which is a real place, but it also happens to be the name of Grover's girlfriend later on in the series, so that was a nice little Easter egg. On that same ad, it's promoting Mia House, which I thought would be expanded on later in the episode, but it wasn't. It also looks like an animal destroyed this screen by flying or ramming into it. There's also a poster for Sweet Summer and an ad for food that's located in Parker Plaza, which I assume is near the famous Plaza Hotel and Casino. Grover mentions that he gave the animals a Savior's blessing. Seems dangerous. Oh, they'll be totally fine. I gave them a satyr's blessing. Which was briefly mentioned in the book as Percy heard Grover talking to the animals. But this blessing did not have a name in the book, and I like that. A savior's blessing. They mentioned the people being in danger. I meant for the people. Which is pretty accurate considering there's a freaking bull and a black bear loose just in this one shot alone. I love how the Lotus Casino is just a giant lotus just as described in the book. I also love how the roller coaster goes outside of the building, but I do wish that they showed more of this in the casino. In the book, there were roller coasters, water parks, and all sorts of awesome things, but in the show, the inside is just a regular casino, and this also makes the inside not really have the same vibe that the outside gave us. Now, in the movie, they played Poker Face by Lady Gaga, and everyone was wondering if they'd give a little nod to the movies by playing that, but instead, they played Levitating by Dua Lipa, which honestly, I'm not mad about but I know a lot of other people will be. One thing I am mad about though, well, not mad, just disappointed, is that when we look around, we see people of all ages in the casino, including many old people, which I greatly dislike. The point of the casino in the book is that the place slows down time and you don't age, even over the course of several decades. In the book, we saw this with the kid who had been there since the 1970s and is still a kid in 2005 when the book was written. And one thing so disheartening is that the movie actually included this kid and got this right. I never thought I'd be saying that the movie did something better than the show, but here we are. This plot point is so crucial for later characters in the series as well, so I hate that they have all of these adults. This might be the thing that I dislike most about this show throughout all of the episodes so far. At the entrance, according to my dad, who's a supercar guy and who I FaceTimed while writing this script, they have a 1959 Cadillac at the front. Later, we also see kids in a VR room, and that sort of replaces all of the arcade games, which is what was in the novel. I like this because it sort of modernizes the series a bit. I should also mention that in the novel, they did not come here on purpose like in the show where Ares told them to come. In the book, they just stumbled upon it by accident and got sucked in by the doorman. The show also added the fact that they were aware of the old myths about lotus flowers and how Odysseus ate them. Odysseus lands on a beach. There's these guys who've forgotten where they came from, forgot everything that was important to them. And they got that way because they ate the lotus flowers. They think this is okay though, as long as they don't eat any of the lotus flowers. What do you think, wise girl? Just don't eat anything. The idea of eating lotus flowers here was taken from the god-awful movies, and this line in the show was actually kind of great, because one, it's a plot twist to people who have only seen the movies when the flowers actually have nothing to do with it. I don't understand if you're not eating the flowers, then why are you forgetting things? And two, because it's sort of Rick Riordan, the author of the series, who's also a writer on the show, saying F you to the movies. I like the back and forth between Percy and Annabeth, where Annabeth says she doesn't know, which shocks Percy. What are we supposed to do about that? I don't know. You don't know? There are things I don't know. On the wall behind Hermes, you can see all sorts of Greek items like body armor, a battle helmet, a ton of different vases, including one that depicts a hero in battle, and much more. I mentioned a bit about their talk with Hermes earlier, and this whole sequence was not in the book either, and honestly, I feel like it should have been left like that. I don't think these scenes were necessary. In fact, Hermes didn't actually appear until the second novel, but we did see him earlier in this season, so I did expect to see him later on as well. Interestingly, they gave Hermes this power of touch, which makes makes Percy see a vision from his past. I know you do. This brief little scene is intriguing, and I'm hoping we see this expanded on later in the season. Hermes also mentions Percy's father. It was your father who warned me to stay away. Said it was awful watching you struggle and feel powerless to stop it. And this goes along with how episode 4 ended, as the ocean spirit told Percy that his father was always watching him. Your father is here. He's always been here. This plot line gets sort of complicated though, because as Percy said in the last episode, his father was meeting him at Santa Monica. We need to go to Santa Monica. My father's gonna meet me there. So what Hermes is saying here doesn't make sense to Percy. He said he'd meet me in Santa Monica. 
Why would he say that if he thinks it'll make things worse? This whole added arc with Percy's father is sort of unnecessary if you ask me, especially because his father wasn't even there to meet him. I think it makes this sort of complicated plotline pointless. We also have the added character of Augustus, which is another thing that I don't think needed to be added, especially with the whole Pan plotline. I found Pan. What? Almost. He's, he's here. I honestly wish that they had kept Grover with Percy and Annabeth for their talk with Hermes, because they keep separating them. Go check that side of the floor. I'll take Percy this way. I like this in the last episode, mainly because his conversation with Ares was interesting, but I'm getting kind of tired of the splitting up. They separated while in the arch, they separated while at Waterland, and now they separated in the casino. I personally want to see the trio together much more than we've been seeing. Overall, I'm very disappointed with the Lotus Casino scene. They completely cut out the fact that you don't age while you're in there, and they added a ton of things that I don't think needed to be added. The way it ended was pretty funny though, because Percy driving what was dubbed the Hermes Yellow Cab made for a pretty hilarious sequence. Yeah, sure, I mean, I killed the Minotaur on my first try, right? How hard could this be? <laughs> My fault. We then see Percy going down to the ocean to meet his father, but as I said, he's not there. We also find out that Percy failed his quest as the summer solstice, their deadline is passed. This did not happen in the book, they did not go past the solstice, so I don't really know why the show decided to make this change, I guess we'll see later on. The ocean spirit also gave Percy four pearls, while in the book he was only given three, so I'm interested to see what they do with that. Having four instead of three of course takes away the dilemma of who escapes the underworld and who doesn't, which I'm also not a fan of, but again, I'll wait and see how that plays out before I make my final judgment. But that's the end of the episode, so it's time to give my thoughts and rate it out of 10. I'm sad to say that this is my least favorite episode so far. With the other episodes, I had much more to praise and very little complaints, but with this episode, it's the opposite. There were many more things that I disliked than I liked. In the past, they changed things that I was alright with, but that was because in past episodes, the changes led to something meaningful, whether it was a nice character moment like Percy switching with Annabeth on the arch, or Grover's talk with Ares. The changes made in this episode, however, made for problems. They not only set up future plot holes, most notably with them taking away the fact that the casino stops you from aging. Like, there are literally so many adults and even elderly people here showing that you clearly do age. This episode just changed or added things for no reason and with no payoff. Nothing was gained from these changes like changes in previous episodes were. Even the way the episode ended with them saying that they went over the deadline. But again, I'll wait to pass judgment on that. I also felt that adding Luke's backstory with his mother was unnecessary and to be honest, far too early. His arc arguably hasn't even begun yet, so having a plotline that isn't there until the fifth book is silly in my opinion. And going off of that, I don't think that Hermes needed to be in this episode. If you really break it down and look at it, he didn't add anything to the episode other than maybe giving them the car, but they very easily could have figured out another way to do that. To be honest, I wish that they took a note out of what the movie did, which is something I never thought I would say, but it would have been really cool if they drove that 59 Cadillac out the window. That would have been exciting and would have cut Hermes having to be there. Now, after all my complaining, there are things that I liked. I love the outside of the Lotus Casino. The inside, though, not so much. I like some of the Percy and Annabeth dialogue, like Annabeth saying that she doesn't know everything, which shocked Percy. I absolutely love the dream sequence at the beginning. I thought that was really well done. I like the fact that they used an Iris message and actually followed every step that they did in the book. And finally, the comedy in the episode was on point as well, especially after the animals were set loose. As I said, overall, this is my least favorite episode in the series so far, which is disappointing considering that the last episode was my favorite. And this is even more deflating because the Lotus Casino scene was one of the things I was looking forward to most in the series. Now, my rating out of 10. I'm giving this episode a 6.5. I was pretty let down with this one. Let me know how you would rate this episode though, and also just your thoughts overall. Comment below, start some conversations, I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say. That's all I have for you guys this week though, so I will see you for next week's episode.
Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.